I saw it uh, taking long for a ride. I'm gonna go look at some wood uh, real quick. Yeah, start getting ready for winter time, even this early. So I was talking to um, talking to my guys the other day uh, during PT. It run and made it to the top of this hill, uh, and wanted to take a moment. You know, maybe a 10, 15 minute conversation. Um, see where they're at on a few things and so I wanted to specifically know what they knew about uh, the earth about land navigation um, orientation things of this nature and I had a, a soldier kind of pipe off he was like uh, you know so I, I know what I need to know um, to answer for a promotion board or, or something to that effect and I looked at him I was like man I, I, I don't I don't care about promotion boards and, and studying knowledge like that I, I there's some things that i think that we all need to know um and and really know um not, and comprehend not just have memorized and there's some basic things about land navigation and, and orientation and orienteering that i think that we all just need to know and so i continued the conversation I was like look let's break this down a little bit more uh, let's figure out what we know just about something as simple as north and direction and so I started uh, the next phase of this conversation just asking a hey, what what kind of norths are there what what is north um, how do we define this thing that we call north and a guy uh, sounded off. He's like, "Look, we got uh, three different kinds of north. There's grid north, magnetic north, and um, true north." And I was like, "That is, that is not an untrue statement." So, grid north um, essentially are just the lines that cartog cartographers, you know, the dudes that actually draw these maps and lay them out, uh, use as kind of a reference system. Uh, and generally speaking, they will run north and south, but uh, they will run up and down, and you'll have some that will run east and west, so grid north are the lines that are moving up and down on a map. And then true north points to uh, Santa's house up at the North Pole, uh, the land of the, of the big candy cane. And so magnetic north... Um, is where our compass will point to and interestingly you know if you looked at uh, some of the maps that, that they have out there that kind of show the landscape of uh, the magnetic uh, interaction between uh, the poles and compasses it uh, it doesn't flow like latitude and longitudinal lines you know, it's, nothing is straight, everything's really curvy because it's a pretty dynamic and chaotic system when you talk about um, um, the magnetic sphere. And different places around the Earth have different uh, specific ways that it'll interact differently and that's why I have all these wavy, curvy things. Um, the, the poles themselves, there's actually like two northern magnetic um, prominent points. One is in Canada and one is pretty close to the North Pole. Um, so when you have a, a compass and you have this magnet, you know, it, it is naturally going to point towards uh, the magnetic pole. Then it's going to give you a magnetic north. But depending on where you're at in relationship to the pole, uh, both lat and long, and, um, on, the, on, the, on the earth, on this terrain that we have, it's going to be different uh, degree of difference. As it is to true north, and, and that difference is called the declination diagram. That is typically what that's called. So, if you were somewhere, say, from uh, Georgia to Central Texas, it's going to be really nominal, uh, from two degrees. To, in some places, it's like almost nothing, up to maybe four and a half degrees. Pretty negligible. Uh, not too big of a difference uh, if you don't take it into consideration, unless you move a, a really long distance. Uh, in other places, like up here in the uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, it can get as high as 20 degrees, uh, depending on where you're at. And that is a huge difference if you don't take that into consideration. So the cartographers, when they make their maps, um, at least for like the MGRS, the military grid reference system, everything is done in the metric system. And so each grid square, each of those big black lines, we have a, a 
grid north and, and then you have your uh, east and west grid lines uh, those are all a thousand meter grid squares so uh, using simple math uh, in the metric system on this which can be confusing sometimes and other times it's uh, pretty beneficial uh, if you moved a thousand meters and you were 20 degrees off like say you're up here and you didn't account for your declination and it was a, a full 20 degrees that it should have been taken into consideration at a thousand meters you're gonna be 200 meters off man that is that that is huge you can't you can't find your destination uh, that you're looking for because you're moving in the wrong direction stopping up here at this uh wood pile for a minute some big old doug furs that need to be cut up that'll be that'll be a lot of fun um so I'll come over here and look at these other ones um you can't find you know your destination because you're moving in a direction that you shouldn't have been it may have been and felt like you're kind of moving in the right direction uh but if you can't find what you're looking for, you did something wrong. And so we talked about that, and then I said, okay, so let's say, uh, let's say you don't have a map, so you don't know what what grid north is, and let's say uh, and you don't have a compass, so you can't figure out what is your magnetic north, um, and you just want to try to figure out man those things are beautiful you just want to figure out which way is true north you know which way is, is north you know and I asked him right then on the spot I was like which way is north and man I had some dudes that were pointing east and some that were pointing south and, and they just some of them just didn't know um, they because they didn't have their bearings about them so, so what are some different ways that we can use to figure out on our own which way is is north and of course it's it's a north ish uh because it's not an exact science um and, so, and one of them had brought up well you know the sun i was like well so what can we tell about the sun uh sun of course is the brightest star that we see at night and it rises in the east <coughs> and it sets in the west depending on where you're at uh, north or south of the equator will kind of dictate um, where the sun sits uh, as far as how high uh, it is uh, which can give you some other telling factors when it comes to you know potentially using shadows on the ground and things of this nature um, but that is certainly a way to, to try to figure out which way is east and west is just based off of the travel of the sun um, and I said, well, that's a star. So how about the rest of the stars? What, what, how do they work? Uh, and of course, they like the sun also rise in the east and sets in the west. Um, and you know, stars uh, at night can kind of take a minute. You're not going to notice movement because they're moving kind of slow. Uh, and, and I'll go in maybe in a later video and show you how to see how much time you have until sunset. Uh, just by using your own body and, and, and some estimation based off of uh, the terrain uh, but the stars can take a little bit longer so you kind of kind of have to look at a star and then wait you know five or ten minutes or look at a constellation wait five or ten minutes and figure out which way those stars are moving uh, and another uh, celestial body that we have at night of course is the moon it's pretty bright um, and half the time that the moon, of course, it moves uh, back up. The moon moves through phases, right? Um, so you have quarter moons, it's waxing, it's waning. You have crescent moons and, and all variations in between uh, to a full moon or new moon. And at any point in time, uh, you, well, you can actually, this is what I told him. So you can take uh, take your hand, you know, and just kind of cup it like this. Well, you, you don't have to do that. You can just imagine that's, that, that's a, a crescent moon, right, kind of shape. And if you can imagine an imaginary line that connects these two points, uh, that, that imaginary line runs north and south. Uh, and the reason is because half the shadow that you have, uh, half the time the shadow on the moon is caused by uh, the Earth's shadow as, as it's being cast on, and the other half the time uh, of the Earth's uh, lunar phase is the moon actually casting a shadow on itself. So whether the, the 
it's like this you cast a, a imaginary line it's north and south or whether the moon is like that you cast an imaginary line and that is north and south it doesn't matter if it's a crescent moon or almost a full moon if you can see a, a tip to tip that's going to give you a north and south line and if you can tell wait a few minutes you can see the direction of the moon uh, that'll give you your east and west so th those are a couple different ways uh, and of course there's gonna be a lot more ways uh, uh, that we'll talk about here in just a few minutes and maybe you know a few uh, that you want to comment down below and uh, we can talk about those as well uh, another easy way you know is uh, understanding the terrain where you're at um, you know mountain ranges in North America uh, generally run in a direction the Appalachian Mountains generally run north east and, and southwest uh, the Rocky Mountains uh, generally run north and south so as you're looking at ridge lines if you can see the ridge line of these mountains um, that can give you uh, some decent orientation uh, the Rocky Mountains of course if further north you get up towards Montana they kind of hook up uh, to the west and of course out here on uh, the west coast uh, mountains generally run like down in California the ridge lines run northwest and then you come up here towards Oregon and Washington and they kind of hook back uh, to, to the northeast um, direction and those you got to be careful uh, unless you are actually knowing what you're looking at as far as the ridge line is concerned because um, it could be a ridge that's coming down off the ridge line which is going to be moving in the opposite direction so you kind of have to know a little bit more uh, than what can meet the eye sometimes Maybe uh, you're on a map, you're on a road, you're in an urban environment. Um, you can look at uh, interstate systems, right? Uh, so even number interstates run generally east and west, and an odd number of interstates generally run north and south. Um, it's not always 100% true, but generally speaking, that's about true. Uh, maybe you know in the town that you're at numbered systems run east and west and letter systems run north and south That's why you got to know a little bit more about uh, the area that you're at so you, you can be more oriented as far as getting around So we kind of talked about some of these things um, And a, a, another celestial body that one of the guys had brought up uh, Was the North Star I can figure out where North is you know if I can find the North Star and we, we talked about you know how to use um, constellations to figure out where the North Star is at and of course you know depending on where you're at you might not even be able to see the North Star because if you're way down in the southern equator you're not gonna be able to see it uh, bad news for all those uh, flat earth earth theorists uh, but maybe that's another story so you can find uh, the North Star and the reason the North Star doesn't move uh, is because there, there's an imaginary line that cuts through the axis of the earth and is in line perfectly with uh, the Polaris and so that's why as, as the earth is rotating on its axis that one star doesn't appear to be moving at, at all but all the other ones uh, do give us the appearance of rising in the east and setting in the west and we talked about a couple other things um, but I think that's about all I got for you right now except that I left them off with the same thing I leave uh, you all off with and that is the, why why is this important you know you, you got to get down to, to, to the root cause and knowing why something is important so I told them uh, you know the reason why it's important uh, to know your direction of, of travel and be able to orient yourself uh, as you relate to your environment it is more than you know a, a tactical reason of knowing which way is north and being able to find your way around different things but even more so it applies uh, I believe it applies to us in, in our personal lives as well man I, I've you've got to know and I have to know where I'm at in time and place right now and I need to have a goal I need to have a destination uh, and once I have that I you know I can plot uh, how I'm gonna get from from here to there and if I'm not careful, um, you know, I can I can shoot a wrong azimuth or a wrong direction uh, to get somewhere that I, that I'm trying to go, and it can ultimately lead me down a road I didn't want to go. Uh, it can take me to a destination I didn't want uh, to end up at with at the end of the day. It can be kind of dangerous, so that's why we really need to master our craft at knowing where we're at 
understanding where we're at in relationship to uh, our surroundings, our environment, our people that are around us, our co-workers, you know, all, all these things, uh, our family and our friends. And we need to understand where it is that we're trying to go, where it is that the uh, people that are in our charge are trying to go, and know what tools that we need and we have at our uh, disposal to figure out how we're going to get there. Uh, so in some uh, future videos, you know, we'll continue to break down some of these other uh, topics that I talked about in my uh, original land navigation uh, demonstration video and break them down in a little bit more detail and try to share the importance of each step and some of the sub processes and sub steps in each one. Uh, but you know, if you like the video, uh, I know I've been rambled, rambling quite a bit, uh, you know, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what was good, what was bad. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want and uh, let's have a conversation. I'd love to hear from you down below and we'll carry on it from there. Until then, we'll see you.